On the list of uh, some of the most common uh, visual swing flaws you see um, is certainly uh, the arms being pinned to the torso, kind of lagging behind the torso of the body. You see that a lot, um, and not just amateur swings, you see that even at higher level swings. It doesn't have to be really gross where you see like a really stuck arms, you know, where the arms are really stuck to the body. Um, sometimes it's just that, that sense that they're not releasing effectively, they're not releasing fully. Um, so it's definitely, you know, one of the, you know, certainly in the top group of uh, swing, like visual uh, swing flaws you see. Um, as often as you see it, however, it is misdiagnosed. In fact, I don't think I've ever uh, heard a proper diagnosis from a visual perspective. Um, what is typically suggested is occurring is that the lower body, that the, the hips and the pelvis uh, and the torso are, are too fast. In other words, the idea that they're, they're out turning the arms and continuing to rotate through impact and kind of getting the arms stuck behind. So the idea that the, the lower body and the torso is fast and the arms are slow. The lower body and the torso are too fast and the arms are slow. If you approach the, the fix or the, the sort of the, the problem um, that way, not only won't you have much success treating the issue, but in most cases, you're going to exacerbate the issue. Because really, in, in nine times out of ten or more, the problem is not the lower body or the torso being too fast, but the arms being too fast in terms of sequence. Almost always, not always, not 100% of the time, and the only way to really identify it would be to look at the biomechanical data, in particular the kinetic link sequence. But more often than not, 90% of the time or more, what happens in this case is that the arms and upper torso initiate the downswing rather than the lower body. So you're immediately out of sequence. The arms accelerate to a peak way too early rather than down in this zone. They're, they're accelerating to their peak way back here. The club is actually starting to be released whether it's full out casted or, or you just start to lose the energy uh, a little bit. You know, you start to see the, the action of, of the club shaft um, sort of releasing from the arms. What happens then in compensation is the body then kicks in to try to maintain some speed and get that club into impact as quickly as possible, um, or you're just going to cast the club off and just lose everything, way, dump everything way out here. So to make it simple, the arms being pinned is a result of the arms being too quick in the sequence, um, initiating the downswing rather than the lower body. So what you need to do to fix this issue um, to address this biomechanical sequencing issue is to get the lower body to initiate first. Um, before we get into to how you might approach this, we'll take a look at some uh, basic biomechanical data, some kinetic link graphs that show uh, what I'm talking about in terms of the sequence issues and how the lower body and the torso as a function of compensation for early arm acceleration re-accelerate or accelerate late to try to get the club through the impact zone giving you that that pinned back look or that arms not releasing look rather than getting that a nice separation of the arms but that's because you're out of sequence so and again it's because of the upper body's too fast or too quick or initiates the downstream what rather than the lower body so let's take a look at some biomechanical data so you can see what the sequencing actually looks at like when you're identifying uh, the issues biomechanically So uh, let's take a, a look at some data, um, kinetic link data from some golf swings that would um, uh, present the type of um, uh, sort of trapping or pinning of the arms against the chest as we, and, and sort of lack of upper body release as we go through the impact zone. So, um, you know, what we see here is uh, a pretty good example of, not, it's not a gross example, but it's a good example of the upper body essentially initiating the down. So you can see that the black line is really kind of, as the arms, if the arms go before the lower body, you'll see that the club shaft gets pushed away from the body. So you don't really see any real loading. The, red, the black line, which is the shaft angle to the arm, should load before it accelerates. And that would be if you had a proper sequence. So what you have here is, for the most part, upper body taking off and doing its own thing. The club is actually being released early. Then what you see is the lower body, and the upper body 
cranking underneath the arm. So at, right here, about halfway into the downswing, downswing, so if you figure here's the beginning of the downswing, here's impact zone, here's about halfway into that downswing, well, maybe a little bit more than halfway as you're getting into that impact zone, the arms start to slow down here, and the upper torso starts to accelerate. So you're going to get that look of the arms being pinned to the torso because the torso at the last minute accelerates into the impact zone to try to maintain some of this club head speed through impact. So what ends up happening really is, is the arms are too fast for the body, and then the body has to compensate. So that's what gives you that view or that look of the arms being pinned to the upper torso. Here's another example. One, this is one where the actual, the, the, the lower body and the torso actually initiate in, you know, not great sequence, but certainly in sequence, initiate the downswing, but they flatten out and they don't really produce any real speed, so the arms outpace. The arms take over, outpace, again, we start to release the club early, and then you get a big acceleration of the, 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 the lower body and the upper body at the last minute to try to maintain. And right in here, you're going to look like, and this is as you come into the last bit of the downswing, right into the impact zone, right right through this zone in particular, you see upper torso accelerating, arms decelerating. That's going to give you that look of the arms pressed up against the chest or you know, kind of stuck on the body because, again, the arms were faster than the lower body and the torso, so they reached their peak earlier, the club is released, the arms reach their peak, and then you get the torso, lower body, hips, and shoulders, accelerating underneath the arm to try to maintain some speed, which right in there gives you the, that look of the arms being pinned up against the, the torso. So for the last half of the swing, last half of the downswing anyway, you're going to get um, the arms look like they're, they're uh, um, connected to the uh, upper torso. So again, what, what we're going to try to do then is we're going to try to drive the swing in a more appropriate sequence pelvis or lower body driving the upper torso, driving the arms, which then releases the club right into the impact zone. When you see that, you're going to see a nice posture, a nice look in terms of, you know, core and, and also upper body to arm to club release. When you get the, um, uh, this is a, a, even a better example, when you get um, uh, the upper body or the arms, I should say, outpacing, initiating and outpacing, you get this early release and then you get the torso spinning underneath it. So, you know, again, you're going to see here we have up the arms slowing down and then all together decelerating while you've got the torso accelerating underneath it. That's going to give you the look of the arms being pinned to the upper torso. So, like we, like we start out saying is the, the real reason you look like your arms are lagging behind your body is because the arms actually accelerate out of sequence. They go too fast, too soon, and the lower body then compensates for that, the lower body and torso compensate for that by accelerating later in the swing. And so what most often happens is it's diagnosed as the lower body and the torso um, being too fast and the arms lagging behind. But really, in essence, what it is is the arms initially being too fast, accelerating too fast, too soon, which then forces that compensation. So you want to address this problem, number one, by uh, uh, impacting coordination so that the, the lower body drives the torso, which then drives the arms in sequence. So you'll avoid having the arms go first and then the, uh, the torso sort of, uh, sort of re, uh, not re-accelerate, but accelerate underneath that to uh, compensate. And that's what gives you that look of being stuck, the upper body being stuck. The other thing is you're now, to people who have done this for a while um, or have that, that sort of that pattern, you know, tendency, are going to also have a, a problem dissociating the upper thoracic from the arms. Um, you're not going to have the ability to uh, coordinate, decelerate, and stabilize the upper thoracic and allow the extremity, the arms in particular, to accelerate um, that pattern of movement, that dissociation pattern, differentiation pattern, is not going to be there. So you're going to have to reestablish that pattern, retrain that pattern. So the two keys are going to be uh, utilize, or initiating the downswing uh, with the lower body, driving through the core, and accelerating the arms off the body, not 
allowing the arms to accelerate too soon and too fast. And then secondly, developing or retraining a pattern of dissociation between the um, upper thoracic and the torso uh, and the arms. All right, now there's no set, exact set way to address the issue, but the premise or the idea or the driver behind it is to get the lower body to initiate the downswing, to get the lower body to um, accelerate earlier in the, in the transition um, to drive the swing process rather than the upper body accelerating first and sort of driving the swing process. That's what you're trying to accomplish. There's a lot of different ways that that can be accomplished, but if your goal is to actually uh, improve lower body acceleration and sequencing, get the lower body to go first, get the lower body to peak out first, not the arms, that's your primary focus. Um, simple way, now the first thing I preface this with is uh, golf in general, golfers and golf instruction, is infatuated to some degree with the backswing. And part of the problem comes from this infatuation with the backswing, and, and in particular, one of the characteristics that there's a, a, a certainly a fat, infatuation with is the rotation of the, the length of the backswing. More rotation equals power is the, the general concept. That's not true, and in fact, the, the length, it, there are certain characteristics of the backswing that are very important that need to be addressed for ball striking purposes and whatnot. But from a movement perspective, um, the backswing is really just a function of uh, the lower body and the core uh, uh, initiating and then uh, changing direction. The, <coughs> the backswing length is really a function of timing, the length of the club. It will vary a little bit depending on uh, the characteristics of the club, the length of it and whatnot, timing issues, as well as your anatomical or your physical makeup. Longer limbs, more flexible uh, individuals will have longer backswings. Uh, tighter individuals, uh, you know, um, shorter limbed uh, type individuals will have slightly shorter backswing. The key to this is the backswing length should just be a function, a natural function of your physical ability, your anatomy, your, your, your uh, um, uh, makeup, uh, the club, and an appropriate change of direction. Okay? So a uh, couple different ways that you can uh, try to approach this. One simple way to approach this is to uh, facilitate lower body engagement um, first and then draw those feelings into the golf swing mechanism. A simple way to engage the lower body first is a momentum swing. When we get ourselves with a little step, it doesn't have to be a full out big step, sometimes the coordination on, on that is difficult, but we can just start the club out in front of us a little bit, swing past with some, some momentum, swing past our body, add a little, a little pre-step, a little almost like a little baseball step, change direction. There is absolutely no way that the lower body, if that is done appropriately and is not very difficult to do, that the lower body will initiate the downswing or the, the transition, change of direction from, from the, the counter movement to the primary movement um, in that exercise. Near impossible. Now obviously you can get better at it and, and really use it to accentuate lower body speed output and the plyometrics of the core. Um, but that is a, is a simple but very effective way to get the feeling of lower body initiating the downswing. So the, again, just a little bit of momentum swing with a, a little mini step. Swing past with some momentum, get some momentum going. We'll step and swing, change directions. Change directions, change directions. So you're getting the lower body to engage the process. The upper body's still moving, the lower body's changing the direction. Boom, now you're not gonna have uh, as much uh, tendency to now go early and then have to compensate, get the lower body. The second thing is you have to work on, we talk a lot about hip to shoulder dissociation, pelvic to upper thoracic dissociation as being so important, which it is, absolutely crucial. But what's as important is the dissociation pattern between the upper thoracic or the upper torso and the arms, both in particular, but think of it just to start as the left arm, okay? You have to be able to anchor this body segment, the upper thoracic or upper torso has to be able to, de or to stabilize to help the deceleration here facilitating the acceleration here, okay? So if you're turning your upper torso, if you're used to turning your upper torso and arm pin together for the reasons that we just discussed, a change of direction, your body's going to be used to doing this. You have to facilitate anchor dissociation, okay? Anchor, anchor acceleration, deceleration, acceleration, anchor acceleration pattern. 
essentially it boils down to a dissociation pattern between the upper thoracic and the lead arm, but, and we can throw in the, the, the trail arm as well, but it's primarily the lead arm. So a simple exercise is to reach across and accelerate the upper torso, just nice and just, just the movement of, and this is just a basic dissociation pattern. Hold, anchor, move the extremity. Anchor, stretch, short. And then we can obviously get more dynamic in it. Take it to the next level, add a little chop pattern with the golf club. Left arm swing, swing up, pattern of chopping across, right? So now I'm not completely stabilized and just stationary like I am here, creating this dissociation feeling, but I am actually pushing my arms away from my torso. And I wanna feel like I push my arms away from my torso, and as the arm passes, it pulls my torso through. So I don't get this feeling of being connected. So you've got two things. First thing is you've got to get the lower body to drive the process. 99% of the, well, 95% of the time, that's your main problem. But now you've, you've created compensation patterns to deal with the upper body starting the downswing, and you've got to break those patterns as well. So the two primary patterns, get the lower body engaged first, and then get the upper torso to stabilize and accelerate the extremity, both in a very stationary basic way as well as a more dynamic swing related way. So you push, let the arm feel like you're pulling yourself through. That gives you that basic so you're developing a pattern for driving the swing from the ground up which is your number one issue. Number two, you're breaking uh, habits of working the torso into the arm and, and losing that dissociation by creating an anchor acceleration pattern, a dissociation pattern, and then a more dynamic version of it. Now there's a million different uh, variations of that stuff and there's a lot of different ways to approach the problem, but if your primary focus is to get the lower body, um, or I'm sorry, to get the arms to go faster because, it, you sit, because the visual looks like the arms aren't moving fast enough, you're gonna keep, you're gonna exacerbate the problem, your athlete's gonna keep using their arms even more and you're almost gonna make the problem worse than have any impact on solving the issue. So again, that pinned look is almost always a function of the arms outpacing the lower body to initiate the downswing. So you need to get the lower body to initiate the downswing, number one, and number two, you need to break the pattern of that compensation pattern of the torso moving the arm. We want the torso to decelerate and allow the extremity to accelerate.